So Henry, uh, you work at a, a college, a university, a large public university. And, um, and when, before we got on the call um, and we started recording, I asked you a question because my son is um, entering his freshman year uh, at college in the fall. And so we started to talk about the question of like, you know, is it a right, is it a good idea to send our kids off to college? Um, considering that we are in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic and that schools may not even be open. They might be, or they might be open, but they're doing online school. And um, I just appreciated so much and mm -hmm. resonated so much with your response. And I would love for you to share, um, um, you know, share with other people your thoughts mm -hmm. about that. Well, thank you. I, I think I have to preface this, this response with a few things. First of all, I'm no expert in higher education. I am very new to it. And my role in higher education, um, I, I work in the, so essentially what is the civil rights office. And I direct the conflict resolution program within the civil rights office and teach, uh, teach people how to deal with conflict and also how to uh, create a, you know, more equitable, diverse, accessible campus um, where every member of the campus community feels welcome and, and feels like they can express themselves in whatever way they express themselves. So that's, that's my, uh, my role. Um, with that said, uh, I think we are at times um, when life is really pointing to us that we don't know. Mm. You know, people say that these are uncertain times. I'm not sure uh, I've seen ever certain times. Uh, times are always uncertain. Uh, but certainly this is uh, for our generation, for this generation. And I mean, w w generation, I don't just mean age. I mean people who are alive right now, people who are going right. to school, you know, uh, people who are parents. Um, this is um, really unprecedented. And so I hear this bigger vision of that what's available for them is to maybe get out of their own, you know, like I was supposed to go to college and it was supposed to have this experience and I was supposed to be able to go and party with my friends and the frat parties and blah, blah, blah. And you're inviting a possible other way of looking at this. Um, one of the things that you also mentioned though, that was really helpful for me is remembering um, just like looking at this, from a bigger view of what it, what can it teach our children? What's available to them? You know, we have this idea of what college is supposed to be, and then we're afraid that their experience won't be that. But you're saying like there's something else that's happening. So one of the greatest invitations, um, you know, that 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 I could extend to anyone, and especially to the young people who may be entering college now, is to live a life without shoes. Yeah. You know, because when we are uh, living in shoes, my experience should be this way, this is what college should look like, then we're not here. Uh, mm -hmm. We are constantly trying to project into the future. What is a projection? Projection is taking someone else is experience from the past and repackaging it mm. right well just like most of us probably don't want uh, a gift right that someone else someone else's we don't want someone else's gift we don't want to re-gift if someone if someone got a gift and then they just rewrapped it and they gave it to you um we wouldn't necessarily enjoy it as much as just something that is unique for us. So the invitation is um, not to try to project what the experience should be. Mm -hmm. And then when we drop the word should, it's, it's a, actually a very violent word because it says that the world needs to be a particular way mm -hmm. for us to be happy with. Mm -hmm. um, there is a poss immense possibility of freedom in that. If we could live the life without shoots, and then we start tuning in to the way things are and seeing things as the way things are. And maybe your, uh, your children's experience is not gonna be the same 
as someone who went to college two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, or will go to college five or 10 years from now. That doesn't mean that their experience is not special. That doesn't mean that their experience is not meaningful. That doesn't mean that that experience doesn't bring gifts and lessons and opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so when we say should, we're putting the world in a box. We are saying, I know what this world needs to look like. And if it doesn't look that way, like for me, well, then things are very bad. You know, then the world is a very bad place. But actually, in actuality, um, nothing is going to look the way it should. Everyone's marriage, you know, as your kids get older and they get married and they enter relationships. I hope their relationships are not someone else's shoots. I hope their relationships are their own unique expressions of a bond with another human being. I hope they have careers not and, and, and pursue things that they like, not because you or someone else told them that they should pursue them, but because they're expressing their unique passion and abilities and capabilities. And I hope, you know, at the end of their lives, at the end of our, each of our lives, we don't just say, I lived a life that someone else uh, told me I should live, but we could say that I had my own path, my own experience. I created with it. I did what I, I, I did my best with it. I experienced things that were unique to me. And that's what made our, my life special. That's what made my life meaningful. Not that uh, we put a check mark that, you know, at, at this age, uh, or at this point in our life, we attended a college party or something else that's not what makes our experience meaningful. Actually, just the opposite of that. Our experience is meaningful when it is unique to us. Mm. And so I think these times, especially these times, uh, present an opportunity for all people to start living without shoes, to liberate themselves, um, from this world and then they could see things as they are mm. and when they see things as they are the biggest gift is then to engage with them fully whatever they may be whatever they may be that's what life is about because if we are stuck in shoes we're always trying to live someone else's experience and that's not helpful to anyone that's yeah, so I'm so glad we decided to go here because I think that's so helpful. And I do think that's an edge of peop a lot of our thinking. You know, a lot of, I'll, I'll speak for me because I just, I feel like, I feel like I'm really open-minded and yet I can feel that you're, you're like a little bit of sandpaper on my edges right now, kind of like, you know, you're like, you're, you're helping me to erode a little bit of something that's in there that's kind of like, but, 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 but it was supposed to, but it was, oh, he was supposed to have this experience. It was going to look this way. His freshman like experience was going to look that, this way. And we're spending that much money. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yet it's like, um, it's like this idea, you know, I hear people talk about that, like the college experience. Oh, it's a waste. You know, it's a, it's a waste. Like, you know, it's, um, you know, we're just, it's not, it's no longer what's needed in the world. You know, this mm -hmm. is, a, we need to change things. And, but you know, this is exactly where we are in life right now. This is where we are in life. And maybe it'll be our kids who are part of evolving education, or maybe it's the coronavirus that's evolving education. And um, I see what you're saying as this invitation for all of us. It's not just for our children. It's for every one of us to say, what is it? You know, what, like, um, how can I be in this exact moment? Not layering upon the idea of what this moment should look like. I was supposed to be, you know, I was supposed to be on, you know, the captain of the sport of the team this year. And I'm not that. Okay. You're not. That's true. It's actually really true. And we, and this actually invites 
to me, this also invites grief mm -hmm. for people like to the, the, um, you know, we probably can't get into it today, but the idea that like, we do have to sometimes grieve things that we were attached to in order mm -hmm. to also move on to what's real and what's here and what's available to us. Mm -hmm. So the one thing I, I would just say, you know, one of my teachers, I, you know, I, I, as you know, I spent a lot of time in India and a lot of time in, in, in an ashram and, and um, doing yoga and, 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 and having a very, very deep yoga practice. And my teacher, Anand Marotra, um, had said something very profound. You know, the, 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 the sign of a yogi is infinite adaptability. Mm -hmm. And this is what this world is, is calling for right now. Um, the challenges we face, the challenges that your children will have to be dealing with as a generation are truly unprecedented. Mm -hmm. And so the best, you know, I don't want to downplay how challenging and difficult this time is for so many people. Um, and yet this is bringing us tremendous gift because if we are stuck in shoots, we're not going to be able to see things as they are. Yeah. We're not going to be able to adapt to them. And ultimately, we're not going to be able to address them. Yeah. If we drop the shoots, then we can be absolutely present with what is, with the current experience. And in being absolutely present with what is, only that can we fully engage the tremendous issues, both related to this virus and uh, you know, the tremendous inequalities that this virus is creating to um, other challenges, climate change, immigration, world refugee crises, um, world's rivers, water shortages. So my invitation uh, to folks, you know, younger people to your children, but actually to all of us. Uh, again, um, expanding mm -hmm. from what our experience should be and, and, and what it should have been and they, they should have to, to um, a broader aspect. You know, how can in this moment, how can we, we each of us, be useful? How can we be creative? How can we do something um, that uplifts, that it contributes peace, that contributes, how can we be, again, another phrase from uh, Anand, Anand Marotra, how can we lead without a title? It doesn't matter if someone is a college student, if someone is a, is a high school student, or mother, or you know, whatever, whatever role we have to play in life, but how can we use this moment to bring more of whatever we want into the world. Look, Nelson Mandela spent nearly 40 years in prison. I am willing to bet that his life did not go the way he thought it should go. Martin Luther King uh, did, had, went through all kinds of struggles. Again, his life probably did not go the way it should go the way maybe he thought in his high school year, his life should go. But the very beauty of these individuals that to this day, you know, we um, in some ways honor, uh, perhaps even worship, is because even though their lives did not go the way probably they thought, probably their loved ones thought that they should go, they made their lives just not just about themselves, yeah. but about something bigger. And then, whether their lives went the way they should have gone or not, their lives became much greater than the people, you know, and just the, the, the container of, of that one person. But Buddha, you know, you talked earlier about Buddha, um, he, he didn't have an easy life either. He, he left, uh, you know, he left his, um, he left his family. He left his child. 
he was going around and uh, being a rich prince, he gave all of that up. Right. Again, for something greater. So I guess as a final point, this is again to say that we need to move away and make a very clear distinction of what is us and what is ours. So the experiences that we should have or should have had are ours. These are accumulations. These are ideas we acquired from somewhere else. This is not us. And if we can become greater than these accumulations and these ideas and not be defined by these ideas, great things can happen. There's so much in there and I, that is so helpful. And so it sounds like there's, so there are many things that many invitations, there's the invitation to expand and that, that includes expanding our perspective. It also ex- includes expanding maybe the way that we imagined our life to look and expanding outside of this fixed idea and into this bigger questioning place. Yeah. And I really love that. You also mentioned adaptability. And I think as you know, we were talking about before we got on here about how the one thing that we can count on in life is change. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you know, people call this uncertain times, but have we really ever been in certain times? You know, clearly not because the uncertainty came upon uh, this new uncertainty of of a virus just happened like that to us. And so, you know, we're, we're, our ability to be adaptable is actually a pretty important marker in our lives. And I just think that the, the idea of, you know, I laugh because I've always said, like, we have to stop shooting on ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. we have to stop <laughs> shooting on ourselves. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think people should on their children and they should on themselves. And, you know, it's, this is an invitation in some ways for us to sit with our children as the leaders of our family to say like, Hey, isn't this a cool, amazing time that you're in? Like, yep, I know. And, um, and I'm, I'm, of course there are people who are in different circumstances, but anyone who's really talking about their ch- kids going off to college and making that decision, mm-hmm. they're probably in a place where they are, you know, there, there are opportunities ahead of them that they're excited mm-hmm. about. And when we look at this, this opportunity for our children, we have a chance to help them frame it in a way that does offer them something as like new possibilities and to enter college with a, like from like a blank slate of like what we don't even know what we're co-creating as a mm-hmm. as administrators and as as you said kind of beyond the title like we are just a bunch of people trying to figure out how to become educated and educate and what would it look like if we were all part of that what if i was part of something new you know or whatever it is just an invitation to to be present and an invitation that I think is so critically important for each one of us to be part of some bigger change that we care about in this world and to align our lives around something that matters to us, that's really deeply meaningful. And to remember that we don't have to do something epic there, there are tiny little steps each one of us can take in our minute by minute day that can change the course of life that we don't have to, our kids don't have to be out there, you know, like leaving their homes and going to another country and doing something. They can, they could do things in their, mo- in their homes right this minute. They can just even show up differently in their attitude and their frame of mind, just just that can be a massive shift. And of course, the invitation is for everyone, not just our kids. I'm just, you know, it just happened to be this conversation is about our teenagers. Of course, it's about, about everyone. Yeah. Thank you for thank like, you <laughs> so much. Great stuff. I'm so excited to, I'm so excited because I don't, I know a lot of people are talking about this, this mm-hmm. topic, yes. but what I've seen so far has been mostly fear-based thinking Mostly, I wouldn't send your kid off to school this fall because there's going to be all kinds of disruption and they're not going to be ready to educate your kids in this way. And it's going to be a waste of money. And I keep on getting this tug that says, no, there's so much opportunity. And this is going to be an experience at the defining moment in our kids' lives and how we and they respond to it will be so important. 
it's so important. I think one more thing that I would add, um, don't expect anyone to teach your kids. It's not, it's not, it, it's not, you know, people can present information, sure. Um, but ultimately, ultimately, that's not what, at least in my experience, what true education is about. It's not about someone presenting information to them. And so when we focus on, you know, how this information is going to be presented or how it's going to be framed, I think we are missing the whole point of education. Mm. The whole point of education, in my experience, in my view, is not to go acquire some information. Actually, that's irrelevant right now. All the information is on Google. Your children and most children are probably quite good with just getting information. Mm. So it is complete waste if they're going to college just to acquire information. Now, sure, there's some specialized knowledge, you know, that people want to be engineers or accountants or computer scientists. There's some specialized information that can be very, very relevant to their field. But beyond that, if we look at education as just a process of acquiring information, and we're talking about education in the context of how that information is going to be conveyed, whether it's going to be online or whether it's going to be through books, whether it's going to be in the classroom or through Zoom, but through some other means, we are missing the point. Because the point education, in my experience, is to actually connect with what we talked about earlier, to connect with our ignorance. To realize how little we know, to develop lifelong curiosity, to develop adaptability, to learn to connect with people on different levels, different ways, to learn to connect with people who may not look like us, who may not think like us, and learn to be creative and learn to adapt. That's education to me. And then it doesn't matter what we do, and then it doesn't matter um, you know, what, what, what the setting outside of us brings to us we are able to deal with. We're able to use our ingenuity. We're able to use our creativity. We're able to learn. That's to me is the purpose of education. And so in that sense, in that sense, Deb, I can't think of a better time to be going to school. I can't think of a better time where uh, students can really be co-creators of their education and can really take an active role and can really take absolute responsibility, not just sit there and expect someone to pack them with information. Okay, I'm here. I paid my tuition. Okay, now teach me. Now mm -hmm. teach me. Teach, you know, why aren't you teaching me in the way that I expected? But now this is an opportunity for them to really uh, become their own teachers, to use their ingenuity, to use their knowledge of technology, to use all of these to become a generation of people, to become a generation of people that is more connected, that is more humane, that is more compassionate, that is more even connected with the fact that all of us ultimately will die. Mm -hmm. And therefore, and therefore, can use their college experience or any other experience, not just to tick the check marks, you know, they attended so many parties or, you know, they've had their homecoming or prom or, or this game or that, but to really use it to expand and to bring to the world a very different consciousness, a very different level of uh, connection and maturity that the world needs right now. So if you ask me, I couldn't think of a better time to go to school and to learn and to adopt um, to new ways of teaching and learning. Amen. I'll tell you, I would be giving you a standing ovation if I could right now. <laughs> that was <laughs> well, so good. That was so helpful. And it was so, it's so what I believe in the world. And like, I, I feel sad that we have this idea that like you go to college and then you're done and then you're like, you've learned. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like life is learning. Everything is learning and everything, you know, yeah. So beautiful, 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 um, picture 
that we can see for our, our children that's available and that we don't know what that would look like, but just that something is available and it's emerging and, and we're part of this. Yeah. Right. Cool. Thank you, Henry. Oh my gosh. I feel like we could probably have 10 other, this type of conversations, <laughs> but just to know, you know, like, and we right. will, we will, we'll, we'll talk Good. again. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it, Deb, too. Thank you. Right. I had a lot of fun. It's wonderful to connect with you. And thank you for bringing into the world what you're bringing in. Mm. I think these uh, conversations you're having uh, with people are very important. And it's an opportunity to serve and it's an opportunity to uplift people now at these challenging times. And it's an opportunity, you know, to um, bring something that is not just information or entertainment. Um, but really allows people to have a deeper connection in this way. And I thank you for that, for bringing this in, into the world. I think that's very much needed and for practicing what you preach, mm. uh, what both of us preach. So mm. thank you for that. Yeah, thank you too, really, truly. It's been an honor. Beautiful, beautiful. Bye. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.